All right, I'm gonna take a quick walk around the fish room and then we'll we'll talk about CO2 at the end. Uh, Tetra tank here, nothing really new. And then I severely cut back on their plants a week or two ago. This tank is CO2 injected. Angelfish tank. Yeah, nothing really exciting with them either other than had a massive cutback on plants a week or two ago all as well. Uh, Red Devil tank. Nothing exciting with him. <clears throat> He's meaner than ever, like always. He will absolutely attack anything that dare trespass into his domain. I don't know where his Oh, there's his. He's got a ping pong ball that he does uh, dolphin tricks with. Chases it around, smashes the lids open, whack, whacks it with his tail. It's probably about a foot long for reference. My pothos up here is about 20 feet long now. Comes over here, works his way around, comes up, goes back. So, thinking by winter, Try to wrap it around the entire room down here. Got to have goals. Let's move over here. Flower horn. Doing well. Getting big. Yeah, quit showing off. Yes, we're all impressed. Mm hmm. Yes, look at you. Aren't you the specimen? Yep. Yeah, he's doing well. It's a 90 gallon tank for reference. Uh, the crayfish. I've moved some of them out into my ponds in an attempt to thin down the population in here. And all they've done is snubbed at my face and just recloned a bunch more times. Uh, if you don't know, these are marbled crayfish. They're all female. They are self cloners. And pretty much every crack and crevice in here has one in there. And some random rosy minnows and a fathead. Yep. They do make excellent scavengers, bottom cleaners. If you don't mind a random fish knowing them going missing. <laughs> uh, shrimp tank. Still shrimp, still a tank. A couple male endlers in there just for some color and some movement. Other than that, there's some red uh, red cherry shrimp. I add water, or I should say I vacuum this gravel maybe once a month, do a water change maybe once a month. Siphon so that, I just top it off and everybody's happy. My Crebenzis. I have not trimmed plants back in here in probably a week or two. You can see what happens. Um, one of my females is sitting on a bunch of fry. Yeah, I don't know where she is right now, but uh, as you can see, everybody else is now cowering over here in the corner because she's a rampaging lunatic when she has fry and won't let anyone get anywhere near her. The Male can barely get anywhere near her, and that's iffy even for him. I don't know where she is. Oh, there she is. Uh, yep, right there. So she's hiding back in there with a bunch of fry. And everyone else, fearing for their lives, is hiding over here. <laughs> Behind the safety of the giant wisteria. Yeah, struggle is real. Endler tank, doing well. It's missing about 30 endlers I gave away yesterday. My friend come over, said, I need something for my tank. I said, good, take some endlers. My circus tank, um, what's different on here? Oh, what's different in here is that it now has a new resident of, where is he, where is he, where is he, where is he? Really? tank isn't that big and you're not that small where seriously dude where are you 
Come on, you're a big yellow fish. Where'd you go? Ah, there you are. One of my yellow labs. He was in this tank with that yellow lab since they were both tiny. This yellow lab has recently realized, oh look, I'm an adult now and I'm a cichlid. I can be a complete dickhead without provocation whenever I want. Guess what I'll do? I'll for no reason at all decide to beat the living shit out of this guy. He beat him up pretty good. His rear tail's all nipped up. Uh, his eyes were all cloudy for being stressed out. And I finally took him out of here when he was cowering behind this plant <clears throat> for days, hyperventilating. So, hello. So I moved him down into my quarantine tank down here. After about a week, he came out of hiding behind the filter, swimming about, eating, getting better, eyes were clearing up. I thought, yay, you can go back in here. Moving it back in here. What did Mr. Friendly do? Oh look, you're back, round two. Within 24 hours, he was, you guessed it, back hiding over here behind his plant, beaten to a pulp. So now he's going to live in here. He's been in here for about two weeks now. It took him about four or five days before he came out of hiding. But he's out and about now, casually strolling about, eating, his eyes are clearing up. If you look at his tail, compared to Mr. Friendly's tail over here, yeah, so, clearly, Captain Sociable here is just not going to allow another yellow lab to be in his domain. Now, aside from that, <clears throat> the rest of the dickheads in here are doing well. I have, in my quarantine tank down here, one of my little tetras. He's had a tumor on his side now for a better part of a year. And it's typically been pretty small, but as of lately it's gotten pretty big and nasty looking. Um, typically most tumors in tropical fish are genetic. It's very rare that it's actually a cancer, mainly because the lifespan of tropical fish isn't long enough for cancer to really take hold and sit in. Um, it doesn't pose any problem to him with the exception of when it gets large and kind of nasty looking like that and open, it does make him a little more susceptible to bacteria that is always in the tank. So I got him in here and I'm not quite sure what the next step's gonna be for him, but he's in here for now and doing fine. Oh look, I still have an entire tank of African fry I haven't gotten rid of yet. And guess what they're doing? Having fry of their own. Yes, on the last water change, I noticed the fry have now had their own fry. Somebody please come get some Africans from me. Because not only do I have these, I have all these. Who are also, you guessed it, having fry of their own. So, it's hot fry on fry action. Somebody please come get some Africans. Alright, let's talk CO2 been a lot of talk lately from people wanting, in, wanting to get into CO2 and not knowing what the deal is. <clears throat> so the basics, you need a tank. This is a big tank. If you don't need a big tank, you can do a little tank. Just don't do one of those little fluval cartridge things because they're a joke. They're expensive and they'll run out within a week. This is a 20 pound tank. This 20 pound tank will run this fish tank and this fish tank for about a year and a half. Maybe 14 months if I'm really pushing it. This tank, I can refill for about $25. 20 pound tank, two tanks, year and a half, tanks for nothing. All right, so you need a tank, you need a regulator. Doesn't have to be a fancy regulator. This, uh, actually this was a, for my kegerator setup. You need a regulator, you need a solenoid. Solenoid's just an electric valve. You typically wire it into your timer for your lights so it turns on and off with your lighting. You don't want your CO2 running when the lights are off. Lights are off. Plants are consuming oxygen, giving off CO2. Your CO2 is giving off CO2. Nothing's giving off oxygen. It makes for a rough night for your fish. So, rule of thumb, lights out, CO2 off. Lights on, CO2 on. Needle valve. You need a needle valve so you can adjust your flow to your diffuser. 
Don't need a fancy diffuser, don't need a reactor, just need a diffuser. Most of my tanks run either these China Special $9 jobbies or the cheap $7 Fluval diffuser. They work, you don't need a fucking, don't need an elaborate setup. So you need a tank, you need a regulator, you need a solenoid, you need a needle valve. You can buy the cheap all-in-one setups that run about $40. You find them on eBay and on Amazon. And get the slit open here. They look like that. That's just a cheap, basic, all-in-one, non-adjustable regulator, solenoid, bubble counter, needle valve. You don't need a you don't need a bubble counter either. Um, they're handy when you first get into CO2 if you don't know what two bubbles, three bubbles a second looks like coming out of your diffuser. But they run dry, and eventually you'll figure it out, and you won't bother filling them up anymore because they're stupid. Once you know what you're doing and that's how they'll sit forever. You can use a drop checker. They're cheap, goes in your tank, will tell you with reasonable accuracy how much CO2 is in your water. But be reminded, these take a couple hours to recalibrate once you adjust your CO2. So don't crank up your CO2 and go, oh look, it's not changing colors, and crank it up more because you will then outschwitz all your fish. The only downside to these regulators, these cheap all-in-ones, and they're much better than they have been in the past, is they were prone to um, end-of-bottle dump, which means when your pressure in your bottle got down real low, um, without getting into a whole lot of technical details, the regulator would malfunction because it doesn't have enough pressure on the primary side to regulate the output, and it would basically open everything wide open, and it would dump the last 20, 30 pounds of CO2 into your tank and gas all your fish. It's pretty rare nowadays. Um, this cheap setup has been running. These two tanks, my Tetra tank and my Angelfish tank for probably two years now. Um, same little cheap fluval diffuser. And I've had no issue with it whatsoever and I have run this tank down to nothing. Um, the way to get around, uh, if you're worried about end of tank dump is when you're tank pressure gets down below 500 pounds, 400 pounds, just go get a refill. Then you don't have to worry about it. So what you're going to need is a tank. This is a five pound tank. It doesn't have to be aluminum. You can just get a cheap steel tank. You can get a paintball tank. Get those refilled just about anywhere. This five pounder on a 20 gallon, 40 gallon breeder will probably last you a year. Big tank. 20 pound tank. This lasts me a year running that 50 gallon angelfish tank and this 40 gallon breeder. Um, this same tank on 275s over there will probably last me about a year. You need a regulator. Doesn't have to be a fancy regulator. This is just a simple adjustable dual gauge regulator that was initially for a kegerator home brewing setup. Keep an eye on Facebook. <clears throat> Keep an eye on eBay. A lot of times people get out of brewing and they'll dump these really cheap. I bought two of these 20 pound bottles, two of these regulators, a bunch of valving set up, and I think I gave the guy 80 bucks for all of it. So keep your eyes open because you can get them pretty cheap. Um, the only thing you would have to do to this setup is put a solenoid here and your needle valve and run some tubing through a diffuser and you're good to go. While we're on the topic of tubing, <coughs> Excuse me. There are people who tell you that you have to buy the specialized tubing made for CO2. Alright, because why? Because they claim CO2 will permeate and leak through the wall of standard airline tubing. And then your tank will run empty, and your tank will be empty, and then there'll be CO2 in your house, and there's all kinds of horror stories that are just ridiculous. Because... That's regular airline tubing. Yep, works just fine. Are you going to lose some? Is it possible? Sure, I suppose there is a probability. But the reality is you're going to lose maybe 1 or 2% out of a bottle that cost you 20 hours to refill. This airline tubing, you can get a 50 foot roll of it for a couple bucks. It's cheap. The dedicated CO2 tubing 
not cheap. You got like a 20 foot roll of this stuff goes for like 30 bucks. It's stupid. Why do I have it? Because I wanted to know if there was a difference. Do I notice a difference? Nope. Not at all. So, while I guess there is a prob probability that you may lose a tiny amount of your CO2 through it, you're not going to gas your house, you're not going to wake up with a headache, it's not going to blow up your house, you're going to lose maybe 50 cents out of a bottle over the lifetime of the bottle. So, thinking about CO2, it's not that hard. Does it work? Absolutely. CO2 is hands down the number one building block for plant growth. Carbon. That's what plants want. Copious amounts of carbon. The trick becomes balancing your CO2 with your lighting with your fertilizer. I use Thrive. I've been using Thrive for years. That's all I use. Two squirts in this tank once a day, good to go. Two squirts in that tank once a day, good to go. And I'm not running a lot of CO2. I'm maybe, maybe running two to three bubbles a second. And uh, you don't need much. But it does work. It's not hard. Just invest in some decent stuff. Don't bother with that little fluval cartridge kit because it'll be out in a week and then they're going to want 20 bucks a week for it and that's just stupid. So get yourself a decent tank, a paintball tank at minimal. I would probably go with a minimal of a five pounder or if you want to go nuts, get a big 20 pound tank and not have to worry about it for two years, year and a half, year minimally, depending on how many tanks you're running off of it. So that's the skinny on CO2. You got any questions? Ask. Later.